All right, welcome to your second lecture for this first week. This opening picture is New York, Times Square, and you're seeing just a crush of advertising. You're seeing taxis with ads on top of them and digital advertising. So as I mentioned in the very first lecture, this is a principles of marketing course. First, we're going to learn the strategy, and then we're going to learn about the cool stuff that you see in this picture up here. So there is always a new media vehicle. But we want to make sure that we have the right strategy so that we use these media vehicles efficiently. But this is what people think marketing is. Oh, you do the promotions and advertising. What you can learn about in this lecture where I talk about the marketing mix is that actually marketers are responsible for much more than just promotion. So here's your learning objectives and for each week's lecture. You're going to see these learning objectives on the key things you need to take away from that week's lecture. So this lecture is going to be talking about the marketing mix, which is also known as the four P's. Those two terms are interchangeable. The marketing mix and the four P's are the same thing. We're also going to learn about this concept of differentiation. Here we go. So on the left here, you see the marketing mix. The marketing mix, also known as the four P's, product, price, place, and promotion. Marketers are responsible for all four of these elements. Coming up with products, pricing those products, determining where they're gonna sell those products, and how they're gonna promote those products. The concept of differentiation is this. As marketers, we are going to focus on usually one of these marketing mix variables to make ourselves different and distinct different from other competitors. So for example, if I was talking about consumer electronics, we could probably say that Apple as a company differentiates through a product focus strategy. They work on design and really trying to make their products different and distinct from their competitors. If we were talking about retailers and uh, pricing, we could all agree that Walmart focuses on low prices. If we were talking about jewelry stores, we could all agree that Tiffany's Jewelers focuses on high price. So uh, some companies differentiate on pricing strategies. Place is how do you get your product from the original producer of that product to the final consumers? Are there retail stores? Is it sold only online? Is it sold uh, door to door? There's a variety of these place options, which are also called channels of distribution. When computers first started to become mass appeal, most of you are too young for that to remember this, but it used to be, you know, IBM was a computer company and you get a big giant computer with a little monitor and a, and a green screen. And computer, personal computers started advancing and becoming more popular, but you had to buy them at a retail store. And then along came this company called Dell Computers. And Dell Computers said, you can order your computer directly from our website. You can go online, order the computer, and we will ship it directly to your house. That was a new channel of distribution, direct distribution. The producer was selling direct to the consumer without the consumer having to go to a retail store to get the product. So we'll explain place more in subsequent classes. And then promotion, when we think about promotion is who really sets the, you know, who uses promotion to set themselves apart from other competitors in this space? Now you might think, oh, marketers are doing all four of these. No, they typically really tend to differentiate on one, maybe two of the marketing mix variables to set themselves apart. Think of energy drinks, which I hope you don't drink these because they're horrible for you. But for a while there, these were very popular and there were a lot of companies. There's Monster, there's Red Bull, Rockstar, lots of these energy drink companies. Red Bull was one of the first. And Red Bull really focused on a lot of promotional activities 
to make themselves distinct from other energy drink companies. Most of the energy drink companies were owned by large soft drink companies, and they did a lot of traditional advertising, TV commercials, outdoor board commercials. Red Bull came along, and they do a lot of special events and sales promotion stuff. They have these competitions and all kinds of special events, and, and Red Bull's there. They go to a lot of um, athletic events and other events and do sponsorships. So they kind of used a different promotional way to set themselves apart from others. So differentiation, again, what are we going to focus on as a company from our marketing efforts to make ourselves different and distinct from other competing products and services? We don't want to do what everybody else is doing, because if we do, we're in the sea of sameness. And it's really hard for consumers to understand how are we different. Differentiation. So the next series of slides uh, talk about the four P's in a little bit more detail. So here you see uh, product. Product is differentiating again on product like the uh, Apple example I gave you. Here's a burger chain. I believe it's stacked and customers are excited because they can order directly from their table using a, a, a tablet. They can customize. So customization and technology is how Stacked, another burger chain of which there's many, is making themselves different. They're differentiating on product. Pricing, I told, I gave you this example before of Tiffany's, which uses a high price strategy to really differentiate themselves. Uh, it could be a low price strategy. So we'll get into pricing later in the course, but pricing is another one of marketing's responsibilities. How are we going to set our price? What strategy are we going to use? Place, how are we going to sell our stuff? Um, <clears throat> are we going to sell through retail channels, which means we make the thing and then we sell it to a retailer and then they mark it up and sell it to us, the final consumer? Or are we going to have a website and sell directly to consumers? Or are we going to do a multi-channel and have both of those? So the place component out of the four Ps, this one is usually dictated by your existing business model. So place doesn't get changed a whole lot. If you're jack-in-the-box restaurants, you sell your products through fast food locations. That's how you sell your stuff. Now, you could change that up and start saying, we're going to compete in the packaged food uh, sector, and we're going to um, take our two tacos, which are popular, and package them up and sell them as frozen food items. But to change that place, you're now competing in a whole nother category with giant packaged food companies like uh, Mrs. Fields and Stouffer's and um, it's a whole different business. So that's why place out of the four P's is the one that marketers oftentimes change around the least. So the more common term is channels of distribution. And there's another thing going on right now, which is the sharing economy, which means companies like Uber and Lyft or Airbnb has made it so consumers can now share directly and basically bypass businesses entirely. And you can, you can stay at somebody's house and pay them directly. You don't have to go to a hotel. So a lot of these business sectors are being threatened. And as the place component is changing for is how consumers use products. We'll get more on that when we talk about place. And then promotion. This is what people think marketing does. Oh, you do ads and social media stuff and come up with campaigns. And it's a part of marketing, but marketing as we know now is responsible for the marketing mix, designing products, how we're going to place them, how we're going to price them, and then how we're going to promote them. So you should be able to click on this video and uh, it will uh, give you an example of a funny video for, for Doritos. So it's not required. If the video doesn't run, it's okay. Um, there's no content in here that you need for assignment purposes. So um, <clears throat> promotion has its own subcategories, and that's called the promotional mix. So to summarize the marketing mix, and I want to make this clarification, the marketing mix and the promotional mix are two different things. The marketing mix is the four P's, and you see these here on this slide, product, price, place, promotion. 
and you see some of the subsets of what uh, we do under each of those categories. The promotional mix on the bottom right of your slide there next to my face includes advertising, PR, personal sales, and sales promotion. And that's the promotional mix. Again, that's shown here. So <clears throat> marketers can use one or more of these tactics, but what I'm asking you to make sure that you know out of this lecture is the difference between the marketing mix and the promotional mix. They are different things. So the promotional mix is part of promotion and promotion is part of the marketing mix. But the promotional mix are these four items here. And in that highlighted underlined hypertext there of an integrated marketing campaign, you can see an example of what that is. When a company is using all of these elements, they have advertising, they have public relations, that's what PR stands for. They have personal sales, which means salespeople, and they're doing sales promotion tactics like contests, sweepstakes, discounts, um, offers. When they're doing all of those, that's called an integrated marketing campaign. So out of this lecture, I want you to understand A, the marketing mix, what those four components are, and B, the promotional mix, what you see here. The remaining slides give you some options of each of the promotional mix items. So that's slides 10 through 13. And on slide 14, uh, it gives you an overview of what the homework is for this week. All right. Thank you for listening.